Hey everyone, today we have the Black Series Magna Guard up for review. I did get all three of these from a seller in Hong Kong that I will have linked below in case you are interested in buying these early. These are part of the Clone Wars mini beat that they talked about about a year ago when these were revealed. They did end up showing a logo for the Clone Wars 20th, but they didn't end up putting that all over a lot of the boxes like they did with the Lucasfilm 50th, which is fine with me. It keeps the packaging a little bit more consistent. These are in the plastic free packaging and it's interesting that the Morgan Elspeth wave with Ezra Bridger ended up coming out before these, or at least I ended up getting them sooner because they showed up at a toy store in Canada. But here we are for now with the plastic free packaging still. Let's get this unboxed and get this figure set up. So I did actually end up unboxing this and messing around with the figure for about 20 minutes before I filmed the rest of the review because I wanted to really get a sense of this figure. And honestly, my first impressions were just total garbage. <laughs> I was really disappointed with this figure for reasons that I'm about to get into. I think overall the sculpt looks nice and I'm okay with the weathering and the paint job on it. We do see that this is an all white Magna Guard. I usually picture the Magna Guards as like blue and metallic, but we do see an all white variant in the Clone Wars, which is where this packaging is, is saying that this is from. So this shoulder pad here is the <laughs> bane of my existence. If you move the arm too far up or just kind of move the arm too fast, it just pops right off. This is like a ball joint in the shoulder, I think, but yeah, it just has this little peg here that goes into the shoulder pads and because of how soft the shoulder pads are they just do not want to stay on i think this like idea would work if those holes were a little deeper the peg was a little bit wider and the shoulder pad was a little bit harder but this combination of materials here it's one of the worst things i've ever seen in the black series like one of the i've never really i can't think of another black series accessory that just like pops off like that like the, an accessory that's not meant to be removable just a part of the figure that just pops right off I've, i can't remember the time i've ever seen anything like this there's a little bit of wrist swivel down there, but I was so tight when I first got it that for the first like 10 minutes that I had this figure, I did not think that there was any movement there, but there is a nice amount of wrist articulation there and you do get a little bit of a swivel on the hand. The swivel on the right arm is so tight though that I could not even get it. You can see that the plastic is actually tensing and getting a little bit lighter there where it's getting strained. That's how tight it was. I might be able to loosen that up with some hot water, but if it wasn't for the other arm eventually loosening up, I just would have assumed that there was no swivel here at all. When it comes to the waist and the hips, we get a little bit in the torso there you can see there's a little bit of a ball joint but then this piece that connects the lower hips to the abdomen that is just glued and that doesn't move at all and in terms of articulation at the hip it is kind of like the battle droid super limited it's the nature of characters like this that have a really difficult sculpt that's hard to translate into real life and right here and here you'd think there would be little swivel points on one or the other but there is only a swivel down here at the knee kind of hidden behind that knee cap thigh plate and they do kind of bump into each other and then probably the most frustrating part of this figure other than the shoulder pads is the foot can either be really pointed forward like that or really tilted up there's no in between in a lot of the poses I was doing it felt like I kind of needed it to be in between it's that tricky thing with droids where it's like you want their ankle joints to be tight but this one they're just like so tight that it was tricky to get him into a lot of poses unless you really like kind of get him squatting just a little bit but for a figure like this that's supposed to be kind of tall and menacing and feels a little bit underscaled to begin with losing a couple uh you know scale inches of height there is a little disappointing on the soft goods here we have two layers of this fabric it's quite nice and it does have some printing on it which is always kind of cool to see when they do go that extra mile and put the printing on the soft goods and here you see me struggling a little bit to get him just into a basic standing pose but you can see that it is possible surprisingly he comes with two different weapons i thought we would just have one weapon with a couple different removable parts this one has those little clear bulbs on the end and then this one is just a plain gray staff which actually looks a lot like the one that should have come with the HK droid. So I did do a little bit of a test and just wanted to show you how that looks. This is a great way to get that accessory for this figure, especially if you're going to be buying multiple Magna Guards and multiple HK droids. I did do a lot of customizing on that one, as you can see. And then he also comes with these pink electricity effects, like we saw with the Electro Staff Purge Trooper. They are okay. They're a little bit strange that they don't really have a clear way for this to kind of fit through. You'd think that it would be designed around a cylinder. They do kind of grip, but they do tend to pop off, but you can make it work. I'm attempting to put him into a bit more of an action pose here. The fingers are pretty cool. They are not articulated, but they do bend just enough to get that staff in. And then you can use that staff as a third leg so you can get him into some, oh, there goes that shoulder pad again. But yeah, using that staff as a third leg, you can get him into some more dramatic posing here. Although I have to say this figure is really not that fun to mess with just like the way it just falls apart as you're playing with it. And just with how tricky a lot of these poses are, it's just, it feels like kind of like an import figure 
like an SH figure arts where they're more meant for very delicate posing rather than the normal way that you should be able to handle a black series figure. Here is a time lapse of it took me 90 seconds just to get this guy into a pose that looked natural where he's just standing straight up and down holding the staff. So we have three points of contact with the ground here including the staff and still it took me a full 90 seconds. Some of you might say that that's just me not knowing how to mess with my figures but I'm just showing you uh, what my experience was. Let's do some height comparisons here to the Black Series Battle Droid. You can see the Magna Guard looks a little bit underscaled compared to it. Here it is next to Count Dooku. This is a custom head by Nuno on the Black Series Count Dooku. This artist will be linked below. They also did this Revenge of the Sith Obi-Wan head on a figure arts body. Figure arts are generally a little bit smaller than Black Series. Unfortunately, I don't have the Black Series General Grievous. I only have the Bandai model kit, which is much larger. You can see how that scales. And then another recent release is the HK Assassin Droid. You can see how that scales there. And you guys know I don't really like soft goods and so since we see the Magna Guard without the cape often I wanted to see how this looked without it. You can get the head to pop off without any heat although I would recommend it just for safety. And we do need to put that shoulder pad back on because I just didn't even bother putting it back on after it popped off the first time since it was under the cape. Now you also have to remove the little piece of the head sculpt that has the wrap on it and it does leave this little groove in the forehead. But if you would like to display him capeless this is what that will look like. So ever since I saw this figure revealed, I was really interested to see how it would look with the cloak from Gore the God Butcher. This figure is only $12 currently on Amazon. I will have it linked below in case you want to pick this up. It's my favorite cape to use for Black Series figures. You can see in this video how frequently these shoulder pads just pop off with me barely touching them. I didn't even touch that one that time. Just a little bit of the cloak tapped it. I really hope for everyone else's sake that there's just something wrong with the one that I have. But I'm really interested to hear other people's thoughts on this figure because I honestly am pretty disappointed overall. Just a bunch of the little things all add up just make this not a great release. The good news is that you can eventually get it into a good pose and it does look really nice on the shelf. I use one of my 3D printed hexagon stands that I designed that has this long back piece just to keep it supported on the shelf so I don't have to worry about kind of messing with this all the time since I do keep all of my stuff displayed on these stands. When I'm not touching this figure, I can look at it and go, hey, this actually looks pretty nice. Like this is a nice release. I don't want to be too harsh on it. But then I try to get those angles into a certain pose and the shoulder armor pops off and it just makes me really frustrated all over again. But again, the good news is that this is going to look fine on your shelf. You can make it work. It's not the end of the world. You know, certain figures, you just can't put them down. You just want to keep them on your desk all the time. You always want to mess with them, try new poses. This is one that I just want to get it posed and I want to just leave it alone because I don't want to have to deal with it. So that's just where it becomes a bit of a bummer. So that's a wrap on this review. This is only one of three figures that I just got in the mail today that I will be reviewing on the channel. So make sure you hit that subscribe button if you would like to see the Padawan Ahsoka review as well as the Phase 2 Clone Trooper review. A lot of really interesting things about those figures and those videos are coming up next. In the meantime, here are some other videos on my channel that you might enjoy. Thank you all for watching and I will see you all next time.